So hello and welcome to this video on the Winter Modular Eloquencer. This is an 8-track sequencer running through A to H with a gate output and a CV output per channel. Random is really at the core of this in terms of we can have random gate lengths, random ratchets, random gates in terms of using probabilities to whether that gate will fire or not, random variations in CV, random step modes, and it's all scalable. So it's incredibly musical or incredibly chaotic and everything in between. For example, when we hit function and random, we can select anything that we actually want to be random and we can turn everything except one of those off. First, let's set the tempo for our track and we will build a basic sequence going through the features as we go. Internal tempo, let's drop this down a little bit. Hitting play, I'm gonna use this output just as a hitting gate, just as a kick just to set the tempo for the piece. We'll look at building beats, which this is fantastic for later on. So going to track eight, I have my gate going into an envelope and an oscillator going into a VCA for a really basic voice. Now let's punch in a rhythm, again hitting gate, that we want to play. Now by default, the notes here will start on C1, an octave above the lowest value. We can hold the track and move a value to change parameters across every step. So let's just move that pitch around to show that off. I'm gonna start on G. Now when we hold one of the steps, we can then move its note. So it's as simple as that. Pitches and gates are now set. Really basic sequence. However, we can go in by pressing gate multiple times or gate length multiple times and change these parameters. So let's add some notes that have a probability that might not always fire. Let's say the first three notes in the pattern. And I'm gonna hold the buttons and change their probability. now see that we've got this varying probability it's not always going to play and thinking of rhythm and funk and groove a very important thing musically is often varying gate lengths so by hitting gate length again we can globally change the gate length for all of these I'm gonna hold the track button and then move the encoder Let's add some variety by changing the gate left. Now hitting gate length again with a variation probability. 
So I'm going to use the last two steps in this sequence and let's change the probability that their gate lengths will vary rather than actually just varying them to a static value. actually tie gates to the next note by holding them down to the icon above the top. So rhythmically it's already fairly complex in terms of it being so basic adding varying gate lengths, probabilities to whether gates will fire or not and variation on those gate lengths as well. Now let's add a ratchet which is a multiplied little burst on top of that step. So I'm going to hold this step, ratchet, and we'll hold and turn. I'm just going to adjust my envelope so you can hear these a little bit clearer. Now on this step, Let's add a probability of there being a ratchet. And a variation of how much change that ratchet will have. So we've got this evolving pattern that's playing around different ratchets as well as those gate lengths. And one really cool thing is we can take a pattern and shift it entirely. So holding function, and track, shift. We can see all these are active and being moved. Now if I turn this off, we'll just move our melody around. gate pattern shows us the new pattern and how that's moving around and this is great for creating intentional musical patterns and then finding new ways to play these by shifting the pattern around within the bar just a quick look at creating a sequence, adding variation to gate length, the probability that gates will fire, variations in those gate lengths, and ratchets, a probability of what that ratchet will be and whether it will happen or not. So in this patch we're going to look at chaining patterns and also creating variations on our melodic content by using random and variations in random with the pitch output or the CV output. Have this second part playing. Simple pattern. That's just there to kind of back up this melody. And then the main melody up on the first track. Now I want to add some variation and randomness to this sequence, so it's not always the same. I'm just going to pick a couple of notes and create a range of potential values that it might hit. So we'll start with that first note. I'm going to hold it, hit CV twice, and then go through the variation and random settings. So first we get to variation probability. I'm going to turn that up full. Let's always have something happen differently. Pressing it again, we can set a range of potential values. And that's an octave that I've set. But to keep things musical, 
I'm going to go to scale. And you can see that we're in a major scale. We could move through any scale, but also that randomness and the notes are going to go to that quantized scale, which is great for trying out new things. I was quite happy with major. Let's also add some variation to this one. So probability of variation. I'm going to put that around half. And the range. Just over an octave. in that back in note again so now we've expanded this melody with some random notes let's actually copy this across into various patterns and make some adjustments and then we'll chain these together to create what's going to start to be like a song so first let's go into pattern mode holding function I've got pattern a1 the one that you've heard Pattern A2, I've copied that across, but just changed the bottom note on this pulsing pattern. Notice it changes at the start of the sequence. I've changed it again for pattern three. Now, just to show you how that works, I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to hold function and copy. Pattern's copied. It's going to pattern A4 and paste. Now I'm going to go into this part and I'm going to adjust its CV. Again, I'm going to hold the step or the actual track out rather than the step. got four versions all with this different kind of root pedal underneath so I'm gonna go into song holding function turn that on now we have two layers here where we can have a part which will actually change patterns and then a song which will change parts so we could have part one which plays patterns one two three four but then we might have a part two that plays two, four, three. So we can have this two layers of creating songs and wider structures, which is great. But we're just going to create a part here with those four different versions. So we're going to go create part. So we're going to choose first choose the part here. I'm going to choose part A2. So I've already been playing around on it at one. Hit the encoder and then we choose the parts to play. Let's say A1. A2, A3, A4. And we can see pattern length and what that was. Press encoder to finish. Let's turn that on. Loop on. So we can hear we're getting these wider chaining patterns. This is a great way to expand your parts and by creating patterns, then parts which are chained patterns and then songs which can be chained parts. So turning the song mode off from that previously created part with the patterns that we chained we can actually use the new firmware to more intuitively chain patterns so i'm going to hold function pattern and this will change pattern as it did do before but if we hold the first and the last pattern that will then chain everything in between so here i have four patterns 
The difference in the patterns is this root note. So if I hold these, you see pattern chain is on. And it says forwards. Let's bring in that melody again. Just going back to the root note, if I was to hold just one part, that's going to turn that off. But if I select this, and then press it again, I can actually change the play mode. Let's say random. So it will bounce around the modes. In the melody back in. So for quickly chaining patterns and playing through them in order, in reverse, coin toss, random, there's various ways we can do this. It's a much more intuitive way to just quickly chain patterns. However, going into patterns, songs and projects and building up these parts and songs is a much deeper way that you can actually chain long form pieces together. So here we have a pretty simple beat. I'll go through how I made this, which is really quick, and then we're going to expand on this using some probability and ratchets to take this a little bit further. So I can mute parts on the Eloquenza, or I can mute them on my mixer. I'll quickly show you the mute. I have a kick. snare, weird cymbal thing, hi-hat, and rim shot. So just by moving through the tracks and hitting gate, we put in our steps. One great feature for live performance is this fill function. So we hold function, hit fill, and this will fill any of the tracks that I hold, and I can hold multiple tracks with gates. So this beat is repetitive and there's some things that I don't quite like about it. So I'm going to mute the sounds on my mixer. Now the kick's fine, but I'd like a bit of variation. So I'm going to add a second note in, press gate again and adjust its probability. So only sometimes will we get that extra kick. Which works for me. The snare, you know, it has this extra note in, which I quite like, but again, it's too frequent. So I can cycle through my two gate windows, either just putting the gate on or probability. Let's just put that about 50 50 probability, and I want to add another snare with just a really little bit of probability. Now this symbol thing, I think we could expand the beat a little bit, maybe with some CV. So I'm going to use the actual random functions and I will patch in a CV, let's say to Vault Per Octave on this sound. I'm going to random. I can select which tracks will be random just that one and what functions will be random. Let's just say CV. Now you can also see scale and step mode and track length have been adjusted. I should have turned those off ideally. So let's just go through and adjust that.
I want it to play all the steps. I don't want it to be forward again. Let's go back to random. Just CV this time. That'll do for now. Just adds a little bit of extra variety. Now I would like some of these notes to have ratchets on them. Let's say this one. And that one. And I'll make that like a little triplet ratchet. However, it's too regular, so pressing ratchet again, we can have probability of a ratchet. Now that works for me. Just going to mute that part of my mixer. Now I like this hi-hat pattern, but I want all the offbeat hats to be in. But I want a slightly busier pattern, so again we can go to probability to do this. Let's fill in a couple of extra notes, but just their probabilities. A little fill. Now I can adjust my shuffle. Bring that tempo up a little bit. Now I've still got another free gate outputs. I've got CV outputs on all, but this little weird 16th note hi hat symboly type thing. There's loads that you could potentially do with this. So for this patch, I wanted to show you how you can use different track lengths to work with polymeter. Now this isn't polyrhythms as is often mistaken in terms of working with different track lengths. This is polymeter, the same division of the beat. They're all running at the same tempo, but each part is of a different length. So two 16th notes, three 16th notes, four 16th notes, as opposed to running five four and four four in the same physical time, which would be polyrhythm. So, with that little side note out of the way, let's look at using different track lengths to create some polymetric patterns. You can already see that they're all ending and repeating differently, holding function and hitting track length. We can see what our track length is. Now for this first one, and I'll go into the mute section and mute everything out. All we have to do when we're in the track length section is press the buttons for where we want the pad to play. So that will play between steps two and four. Minimum track length is two, maximum is the 16 steps. So I have a pattern length of 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm not using these bottom two, but let's unmute the parts. So kick, playing every four beats. Folded tone every three. Little clicky sound every two. If I just go back in and actually set that track length up again, gear to the start. Little snare hit every five. Noisy sound every six. Another little noise every seven. And then these bottom two aren't used. So it's a great way of creating this polymetric rhythm. This, this kind of minimal techno patch I've got going is working great. Let's add some effects, because why not? And then move on to another patch. So for this final part of the video, we're going to look at the LFO mode. But first, here's a simple sequence. The only thing that's kind of different with it is this last step has a probability over the gate firing and a ratchet on it. For now, although it's going to go back in, I will pull out the gate that's controlling this patch just so my oscillator can drone. Now by clicking on a channel, I've already got the cables plugged in. Holding function and hitting LFO. We're now in LFO mode. I'm going to assign LFOs with their shape, their range from 0 to 9 volts. We can't do negative voltages, but we can offset voltages and control that range between 0 and 9. The time can be set as a pattern long or multiple patterns long, or a number of steps. So let's set up some LFOs to get this oscillator modulating. gates back into the oscillator now we've heard it these lfos aren't linear and smooth they do step that's a restriction of the module but it's a great addition to be able to get this cycling lfo modulation on top of eight channels of gate and cvs presuming you don't want a cv the pitch cv is now taken over by the lfo however i can still program gates on those channels so they're not wasted these three lfos could have another gate rhythm coming out we just sacrifice the pitch CV for the LFO CV. So that's it for this video on the Winter Modular Eloquencer. Looking at building melodies, building beats, adding variation to pitch using scales, different track lengths can be accessed really easily, shifting tracks around, using probabilities, variations on those probabilities over gate lengths and ratchets, chaining patterns with the new quick pattern chain, the new LFO, the song and part creation, which isn't quite as quick as the quick pattern chain, but it's there for creating more complex sequenced structures. Eight tracks, we've got an auxiliary input, one and two that we've not looked at, an auxiliary out, a clock out, we can reset and clock this externally. We're really just scratching the surface in the time we have here for what is a fantastic eight part sequencer. Extremely musical, random at the core for very subtle musical variation to all out chaos. A really impressive first module from Winter Modular. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to check out more modular videos in the Modular Monthly playlist on the Future Music YouTube channel.